On this week's episode of Inside Iowa, find out about a new social media site that helps students study. Learn about a UI camp that helps elementary students with stuttering. Hear a touching story about how the Children's Hospital ensured the survival of a premature baby. Fry up a breakfast skillet with Kinnick's Kitchen. And learn about the College of Public Health's Business Leadership Network. Inside Iowa starts now. Hi there, welcome to another episode of Inside Iowa, your one-stop shop to catch up with students and alumni and to learn more about some of the things that are happening around campus. I'm Lauren Moss. And I'm Eric Dawn. Each week we'll share with you the stories from around the university and how it has an impact on students, faculty, staff, and the community. So Eric, have you ever been studying for a class and wish you could ask a classmate a question but didn't know who to ask? Lauren, that happened to me all the time, but then I found a website called Clusterflunk, which was created by two University of Iowa students who realized many people had the same issue. Same here. The idea of the site is to make sure you don't flunk. It's a social media study site that began right here at Iowa thanks to the Bedell Entrepreneurship Learning Laboratory. Currently, it's available across the state at the University of Iowa, University of Northern Iowa, Kirkwood Community College, and Cornell College. Personally, I love the site. Students can add their classes, discuss notes with other students, and share files like study guides. Let's find out more. You Facebook. You tweet. And if you're an Iowa student, you might also flunk, although not in the traditional sense. It is simply a tool for students in lecture halls to talk to the other students in those classes. And they can talk to those students via the, the class wall, via uploading a file. In its simplest form, it's just a tool for other students to talk to other students. Located above Starbucks in downtown Iowa City is Clusterflunk, a startup initiated by two Iowa students who hope to change the way you study. You'd go to your, your big lecture classes freshman year, there'd be 300 students, right? You'd go to those classes at the beginning of the year, you know, by the end of the semester you'd meet five, ten, more realistically, two or three of those kids if you were lucky, right? So that was kind of our first big pain point that just baffled us, like, there's, there's 295 other students out there, why, you know, why can't we meet them, why can't we talk to them, we're just wasting all those social resources. We have Facebook, we have Twitter, we have social networks for everything out there, why wasn't there a tool that I could just, just jump on, you know, 2 a.m. and go talk to one of the kids that are in my class? You know, because realistically, one of those kids would have the same problem. One of those kids could help me out. The genesis of this idea was a BPA project um, my junior year of high school. It was, they kind of just tasked us with making education more social. Our goal from the beginning was to create an educational site that had a social media feel. Those are the mediums um, we can talk to our customers uh, most easily. So we're constantly getting feedback, we're constantly listening to our users, and we use that feedback to kind of model our site. That's a huge part of our business. We listen to our customers, and our customers make our business, basically. To initiate that business, Nelson and Delago received a great deal of help from acting director of the John Papa John Entrepreneurial Center, Lynn Allendorf. The Bedell Entrepreneurship Learning Laboratory is a facility and program that's open to any U of I student who wants to start a business while they're here at Iowa. So there's 17 offices, um, 16 of which are private offices for students to um, have a space to go and you know work on their business. Yeah, they introduced us to lawyers, they introduced us to accountants, they gave us connections within Iowa City and they were awesome to us. It's exciting to see where it was and then it's exciting to see where it could be. I just signed up for my classes and it was awesome because there was actually a few people already in the classes that I wanted to use and people were already sharing notes. Though Nelson and Delago were initially met with negative feedback from faculty, they haven't experienced much tribulation with plagiarism or cheating on the site. Students want to use the site to, to learn from each other and they want to use the site honestly. We tend to see more you know, sharing of personal notes, sharing of like personal study reviews. 
not you know professor created content and not you know copywritten um, like study guides or books. Students can sign up and use the service for free, provided they have a university email. So what keeps the site going? They've received $100,000 from angel investors and are researching ways to attain revenue independently. We have like 15 things mocked up and uh, we're going to be testing some of them this semester, but it'll always stay free. That's the main thing. It'll always be free for the students. As of October, the guys at Cluster Flunk have announced that the site will be accessible to 50 major universities starting next semester. When we come back, hear about a summer program dedicated to helping children with stuttering problems. Hey Hawkeye fans, don't miss the action on Mediacom Court at Carver Hawkeye Arena this fall with an exciting season of Iowa Hawkeye Volleyball. For only $30, you get two season tickets, two Iowa Volleyball t-shirts, weekly emails, and much more. Seniors Nikki Daly, Rachel Bedell, and Bethany Yeager want to see you at Carver Hawkeye Arena this season. To order, call 1-800-IA-HAWKS or visit HawkeyeSports.com. We'll see you at Carver Hawkeye Arena this fall. Go Hawks! For more than 100 years, the University of Iowa community has been waking up to the Daily Iowan. Today, it's the largest newsroom in eastern Iowa, and now you can see the news every night on Daily Iowan TV. DITV, your news, sports, and weather source for the University of Iowa and is produced by University of Iowa students and presented by the Hawkeye Network. Welcome back to Inside Iowa. The University of Iowa Speech and Pathology Center has held summer programs for children with speech and language problems, including stuttering, for over 50 years. The program is called UI Speaks, and not only does it help young children, but graduate students in the program are also gaining hands-on experience about their future jobs. The Wendell Johnson Speech and Hearing Center is the University of Iowa's Department of Communication Sciences and Disorders. At this clinic we do therapy, um, it's a training program, so we have graduate students in speech pathology and audiology and they're being trained through the clients and the faculty that work here at the, at the university and they're earning degrees in uh, speech and hearing science, speech pathology and audiology. So we have clients that come in from around the community, around the country, and do outpatient uh, evaluations and provide therapy for our clients here. It's a disorder with fluency um, where individuals have trouble connecting words and sounds and getting sounds out and it has been called stammering, disfluencies, stuttering, different terms. But basically it's a problem with the flow of words and uh, it occurs in about 1% of the population. The incidence we do know is more frequent in boys than in girls, um, but we do see it in both groups. The University of Iowa has had a summer program for kids who stutter and for kids with other speech and language problems. Um, for well over 50 years. More recently, within the last 10 years, we started a program uniquely for elementary students who stutter. And so it's a, it's a combination of a training program for our graduate students and a therapy service program for clients and children who stutter. 
We've been fortunate to start a couple years ago. We started a, a cooperative program with the art education program here at Iowa. We have a faculty member there who um, comes over with a couple of her graduate students and we give them an art program every day. So they have an hour of art and they do different projects. This year they made puppets and then at the end of the week, the first week of camp, we had a puppet show that the kids created where their puppets had superpowers and they could act out what their puppets did. So they love that. They love the art using their hands and and we linking it into communication is, is really fun for them. We also, of course, this is Hawkeye country, and we're very proud of the University of Iowa and the history that we have here. So the kids all, all want to know if we're right next to the football stadium, and they all know about the Hawkeyes. And one of the highlights of, the, of their week is to go on a tour. The uh, athletic department's been really helpful every year. I have a couple of athletes and a couple of faculty members who take the kids around and show them the inner workings of, of the football stadium and the uh, basketball arena. And the kids are great. They, they, uh, their responsibility is to have their questions prepared and they you know there's 12 of them and they each have five questions so the the people are real patient with them and asking their questions and um, they get to see the weight room and so on but it's a good way for them to use their strategies in a in a realistic situation but also understand a little bit about the Hawkeye community and, um, and so it's a win-win situation for for the athletic department and I think for the kids as well. UI Speaks is just one of the many programs that the University of Iowa offers to help the community and to prepare students for life after graduation. When we return, we'll find out about another wonderful program at the Children's Hospital and how they gave the gift of life to a little boy and his family. We have a certain way of doing things. You'll see it in the determination of our students, in the classroom and on our fields, in the collaboration among our faculty, that lead to great innovation and change in the vision of our writers, artists, and doctors. Bringing the world to Iowa and Iowa to the world. It's the Hawkeye Way. Guys are rising. After a trip to the NIT championship game last season, the Iowa men's basketball team will be heating things up on the court once again, and you can help get Carter rocking. Order your season tickets today. Don't miss a minute of the action. Call 1 800 IA Hawks or visit HawkeyeSports.com. Welcome back. As you may know, the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics is one of the best in the country. And for good reason. The University of Iowa Children's Hospital saves lives every day, and one child who benefited from the experts at the hospital was a little boy named Dexter. Normal pregnancy lasts around 38 weeks. Dexter was born at 20 weeks. The hospital rushed his mother into an emergency C-section delivery in order to save his life. Doctors were prepared to take care of both the mother and the baby, Let's take a look at how they pulled off this amazing feat. So when we found out that we were pregnant and expecting, we were absolutely excited. It was exactly what we could dream of. That was our reality for three months and we were planning and, and then overnight, all of a sudden, all of that, was in jeopardy because I went into labor right in the middle of the pregnancy. And it was too early, it was 20 weeks. 
Our first interaction with Dexter's parents came before Dexter was even born. We told them that the odds were uh, less than 50% that he would probably survive, and uh, we asked their permission to, to give it a shot. As things started to progress, one of the OBs came in and he looked at how things were going and said, this is it, we're gonna do a C-section. And within minutes, I was out the door and into the operating room and the neonatology group was in there too. The room was filled with people. We then took him to the NICU and started resuscitation. Uh, he uh, received uh, a surfactant, which is a, a very important chemical for premature babies that opens up their lungs. I was terrified as Dexter was being born because I just, I knew so little about what is possible with a baby who's born at 23 weeks. I didn't think it, before I was even in labor that that was a baby that could survive. There's lots of things that can go wrong. The first thing we worry about is interventricular hemorrhage or bleeding in the brain. Uh, we were all very happy when his uh, ultrasound of his brain on, uh, after a week of age showed he didn't have an interventricular hemorrhage. Having Dexter in the NICU put our entire life completely on hold and really it was just all we could do to get through each day, especially in the beginning. Being in an NICU is like a roller coaster ride and Dexter had some ups and downs in his care. I tell the parents that the baby's the boss and I just have to listen to them and give them what they need. And slowly as he started to get better and better, we started becoming more reassured that it really was going to be okay. And at that point, one of the doctors said to my husband, you know you're going to be taking home a normal child from this NICU. And it turns out the doctors were right. His dad reminded me all the things I said when he was first born, how I thought he was going to do okay, how I was expecting a great outcome. And when he was going home, the dad said, I, I really didn't understand why you would lie to me that first day. And uh, we weren't lying. He went home a very happy, beautiful baby. So now we have a 15-year-old, a 14-year-old, an 11-year-old, and Dexter's three. And he's just one of the crowd. He goes to preschool and is making friends and talks about what he does at school. He paints paintings, and he's just becoming a fun, vivacious, fiery little three-year-old boy. The new children's hospital will allow all infant and children's services to be available in a single area, a comprehensive area. Um, I think it'll let us have services that all the parents can enjoy together rather than having specialized services in specialized parts of the hospital. When this new children's hospital opens, parents will have one place that is all about kids. I don't think there's a worse thing for a parent to experience than having a child that could die or so, so sick. It's just, I don't think there's anything worse but we're really lucky that it happened here in Iowa to us and that we have Dexter. Seeing Dexter now is, is, is a highlight of my career, actually. Uh, we worked so hard. He was one of our first 23-weekers. He was a baby who uh, things could have gone either way. That's what happens when you push the envelope. But he ended up doing so well. Uh, I saw his mom uh, last year at the March of Dimes and she showed me a picture of him looking like a beautiful, happy baby. And I said, wow, you just made my day. And she came back with, well, you guys made my life. I thought that was a, a really a, a touching comment for her to make. That was truly a touching story. And did you see that kiss he gave his mom? What an adorable little kid. Certainly pulled on the heartstrings. Coming up after this break, see what we've got cooking with Kinnick's Kitchen. 
The Hawkeye Wrestling Team is ready for the 2013-2014 season. How about you? Get ready by purchasing your season tickets today. For only $85, the Hawkeyes host wrestling powerhouses Oklahoma State and Minnesota at Carver Hawkeye Arena this season. And Tony Ramos, Derek St. John, and Bobby Telford want to see you there for another electrifying season of Hawkeye Wrestling. To purchase your tickets, call 1-800-IA-HAWKS or visit HawkeyeSports.com for more information. May. When Basabi has been very active on the offensive glass. And there it is. Devin Marble with that score joins his Dan Roy in the thousand point club here in Iowa. The first father son duo in Big Ten history to accomplish that feat. He just made history. Father and son each in the same exclusive club in Iowa basketball history. Kick back and relax as Java Blend takes you from your home right into the Java House in downtown Iowa City. Experience local and national talent perform for a live audience featuring musical groups from all over the country. Java Blend puts you in the front row of each performance. Java Blend is presented by Iowa Public Radio and the Hawkeye Network. Tradition. Ambition. Exploration, inspiration. You feel it when you step on campus at the University of Iowa. The energy and pride of students inspired by our history. And excited about our future. When you join the Hawkeye family, you're a part of it all. Be a part of it. Be a part of it. Be a part of it. Be a Hawkeye. As football season goes on, the fall weather gets chillier and chillier here in Iowa City, especially in the morning for those early tailgaters. It sure does. The earlier you rise, the colder it is. That's why it's important to cook up a warm breakfast before the game starts. Very true. Hawkeye fan Linda has been tailgating for 10 years and discovered a breakfast skillet that does the trick. It sounds delicious. Let's see how she does it. Linda, who's been going to Hawkeye games since she was six, and she's been coming out tailgating outside the stadium for the last 10 years, and she has an awesome looking skillet. So Linda, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. Tell me a little bit about what you're making this morning, and uh, what made you want to bring it for today's game? Uh, this is a Jimmy Dean skillet uh, dinner, or breakfast, I mean, uh, and usually we, we have a lot of uh, casserole dishes, breakfast casseroles, and so as a supplement when we start to run out, then I also bring along some Jimmy Deans and so because they're quick and easy and they taste great and warm you up on a nice cold day. So is a skill like this, is this something easy to make? Oh, it's absolutely, make? absolutely. Yep, it's just, just frozen and you uh, actually just thaw it out and add some eggs to it and it's good to go. Is this something that's good to bring for an early morning game? Correct, yeah. Yeah, we try and have something in the morning and then we also then grill afterwards. So. Do you have any secrets to be a good tailgate? Uh, just lots of food, variety, yep. Yep. and everybody comes, everybody brings, so we got a, just like a buffet, you know, for everything. It's important for friends and family to get together. Oh, absolutely, and we're in the same spot, so everybody knows where we are, so we get a good assortment of different people every single week, so it's really fun. You mind if I dig in some of the skillet? Oh, yeah. I gotta say, this looks like something that, uh, that will keep you warm on the uh, cool fall games. You can tell there's a lot of good stuff going on in here. Eggs, potatoes, sausage. Peppers. Peppers, none of this I'm going to say no to. So, i got to tell you, this looks really good. And it is a little chilly this morning, so I'm looking forward to uh, eating something that's going to warm me up. Warm. Oh, oh, I tell you, i got to love the potatoes here. Let's have another bite. So next time you're... Try and plan your tailgate. Tailgate. Try to figure out what to do. What you do is uh, go out and make yourself your own skillet. You're going to be glad you did. Well, thanks to Linda for sharing her tips on making a breakfast skillet. The University of Iowa College of Public Health is in the business of giving tips as well to communities around the state. 
That's right, and it's all done through their initiative called the Business Leadership Network, which was launched in 2011. They visit towns all over Iowa and hold forums to discuss public health. Let's find out more from the Dean, Dr. Susan J. Curry. Today is the first time that the College of Public Health has come down to South Central Iowa as part of our college's business leadership uh, network initiative. And that's really about connecting the college with communities um, in this part of the state to explore our common mission to improve the health and well-being of Iowans. Um, there's a lot coming out now about, oh, you know, your reading is going to kick our insurance premium services. I'm an occupational therapist. An occupational therapist work with the whole lifespan. We came up with a set of criteria for picking uh, areas in the state that might be a good place to start our business leadership network. So we wanted areas that had a fair number of what you'd call micropolitan areas. These are kind of small cities but that have a lot of rural communities that surround them that use them. Places that had a fair number of small businesses and business leaders. Those business leaders are often leaders in their community and they have an intrinsic interest in the well-being of the people in their community. My point in going into all these communities is this is not a one-off. Um, and it takes time. It takes time to develop relationships. It takes time to um, you know, really develop good collaborative ideas. And I think everybody left here feeling like they learned a lot of things they didn't know before they came and also like they want more. And, and being engaged with communities across Iowa is what this is all about. With Peta and Centerville and the Garden Project. That just goes to show that the College of Public Health really tries to serve the public. Absolutely, Lauren. Well, that wraps up this week's episode. Thanks for tuning in to hear these illuminating stories about the university, its students, alumni, and staff. Be sure to come back next week to hear even more about the university and the impact it has near and far and wherever you are. For Inside Iowa, I'm Lauren Moss. And I'm Eric Dawn. See, See you, you next week. week.